Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and after I finished an outfit for Arios, I felt like it was time for Lele to get the same treatment. She's had a few outfits before, but none really designed to fit her as a character. I decided to pull out an idea I sketched for this character in 2013, which was the last time I revisited design ideas for her. The outfit wasn't really complicated, it just had a few layers and some things I'd need to order supplies for. So I put in an order for the things I'd need to make it and got started with what seemed like it would be the most simple, the pleated skirt. I've made pleated skirts I don't know how many times before, so I figured it would be really simple. But I've also never made one for this doll, and I ran into some unexpected issues. Every time I've ever made a pleated skirt before, you measure the waist for the waistband, then multiply that measurement by three so you have enough material for pleats. That ended up not working for Laylee at all, because her hip measurement is so much larger than her waist measurement, so I ultimately had to remake the skirt three times before I got one that was big enough to fit her hips. This did give me time to experiment with some different methods of making pleats though. I started with a method using pins where you measure the width of the pleat you want, mark it, then measure a gap that's double the pleat width. When you fold these up, the pins become guides for ensuring your pleats are all exactly the same width. After I got started though, I found it was just as easy to mark the first pleat that way, but then just mark the width of the pleat plus the double width with a single pin, because I could fold the pleat with the same amount of accuracy using a single pin as a guide. After the first skirt ended up being too tight over the doll's hips, I tried another idea for making the pleats which was to use a ruffler foot on my sewing machine, set to make the deepest pleats possible at half inch intervals. This was definitely easy, but I had to spend a lot of time folding the pleats the rest of the way down the skirt too, so it didn't really save much time in the end aside from that top edge being done for me. I made this one 3.5 times the length of the waist measurement though, so I really thought it was going to fit and I moved on to finishing the bottom of the skirt with a rolled hem. I still had to finish pleating the length of the skirt after the hem was sewn, but it ended up being a failure in the end too because even 3.5 times the waist width wasn't enough for the new YID hips once all the pleats were in. So I made the skirt a third time, and as they say, the third time's the charm. For the third skirt, I decided to make pleats using the fork method. I'd avoided it at first because I thought using a human-sized fork to flip the pleats would be too difficult. Somewhere along the line, I remembered that I had doll-sized forks. I thought about the direction I wanted the pleats to lay at first, which is affected by which tine you put over the fabric, then I got to the pleating. This was by far the easiest method, and this time I hadn't cut the fabric to a specific width, so I just made pleats until I could hold the strip of material up to my doll and be certain it was the right size. Once I was absolutely positive it was going to fit, I made the rolled hem along the bottom edge and sewed it in place. After I pressed the skirt so the pleats would stay put, I cut the waistband to the doll's measurements plus a half inch so I'd have room to add a snap. I sewed the ends of the waistband closed, checked to be sure I had enough pleats to fill it, then flipped it right side out and folded the edges of the open bottom to the inside.
Pressing the skirt's waistband that way made it a lot easier to attach it to the top. I trimmed the extra fabric from the pleated material, finished the edges with a zigzag stitch, and sewed the back of the skirt shut. This meant unfolding some of the pleats so I had space to work, but since they were pressed, they folded up nicely again when I was done. The seam closing the back forced the edges of the back to fold to the inside by a quarter inch, so I had a nicely finished edge on the back opening of the skirt. Since the top edge of the skirt is exactly the same width as the waistband, it'll create a slight overlap in the back when the skirt is closed, which hides the opening slit without a need for a zipper or snaps. I slid the waistband on over the top of the pleats until it was all the way down, then moved the pins from the pleats to the waistband to keep it in place. It was surprisingly frustrating and fiddly work, and I didn't really enjoy it, but giving myself more time to work on projects meant I didn't have to rush, so at least it wasn't stressful. I sewed the waistband on, and then the skirt was finished and ready for a snap. I feel like it was the hardest part of her outfit, which took me by surprise because they're normally so simple to make. Then it was time for her shirt. I drew a pattern on some paper I had used to print and edit a book manuscript. I have lots of these in binders around the house, and I've never known what to do beyond recycling them, so using the paper to make patterns seems like a good way to make it useful again. I cut the pieces out from crinkle cotton so it would add some texture to the outfit. I've added the final version of this pattern to my site's pattern archive, and you can find the link for it in this video's description. The final version has seam allowances drawn in, so you don't need to add space around the pieces like I did. Since it's a whole new pattern, I'll go ahead and share instructions for how to put it together here. It's kind of a unique shape, so the side and front pieces should go together with right sides together, starting at the bottom edge. Sew up the side until you're about a quarter inch from the corner. Then with the needle down through the fabric, lift the presser foot and shift the side piece so the angled edge becomes flush with the side of the front piece. These corners can be trimmed a little to ensure they lay nicely, then finish the edges with a zigzag stitch. I 
After those seams are finished, you can go around the edge of the entire top with a zigzag stitch to keep the edges from fraying. Then the edges can be folded to the inside by a quarter inch and pinned in place. The top of the front piece doesn't have to be finished, since that's where the collar will go. Sew the folded edge down all the way around the whole top. My new sewing machine doesn't like to turn in corners, so I sew off the edge and start a new seam for each edge. Trim up the loose threads and grab the collar. The collar piece should be folded in half so the right side of the material is against itself, making a long strip. Sew the sides closed, then turn the collar right side out. Turn the corners well, then fold the bottom edge of the collar to the inside by a quarter inch and pin it in place. You can press or finger press this piece. Then remove enough pins to slide the top of the shirt's front piece up into the center of the collar, so it's sandwiched between the two layers of collar fabric. The bottom edge of the collar can then be sewn closed, which also attaches it to the top of the shirt. To close the back of the shirt, I add some super thin velcro to the back opening. The collar can be closed with velcro or a snap, which gives us a finished halter style top. The next layer I made was the underbust corset. I made a pattern for a new YID corset previously, and it has detailed instructions of its own, so I'll share a link to that video. I've also uploaded the modified version I'm using here for the underbust style, so if you like, you can use the pattern to make your own. Construction for the underbust versus overbust corset is pretty much identical. The only difference is how far up the doll it goes. I recorded me making it, so I'll let you see the process here, but it's really just the same, so I'll spare you the instructions here and spend some time talking about the outfit itself instead. This is the same satin fabric I used for Lulu's Ice Fairy dress. I absolutely love it and have always wanted to make a corset for Laylee using this material. 
Unlike Lulu's Ice Fairy dress, this corset is going to have boning in it, so I didn't add any interfacing to support the shape of this material. This was fabric one of my very sweet friends gave to me, and I'm really happy to finally have used it for its intended purpose. I like the color and pattern for Laylee, I think they suit her well, and it makes me miss the Hancock fabric stores because that was where it came from. We just don't have a lot of places to get fabrics here now, and it's made it a big challenge for me to sew because a lot of my materials now have to be ordered in, and I never know how they're going to feel or drape before they arrive. That also introduces the problem of whether or not they arrive, because with shipping running slowly, I never know when stuff will get here or be late. I'd originally intended to sew her entire outfit in the two weeks between the last project I shared and now, but things got interrupted by the weather in more ways than one. We had an ice storm, which knocked the power out for several days. And while I was raised in an area that's pretty normal and we were prepared and comfortable, I couldn't sew or record the process without electricity. So I ended up losing half a week of work time and that set me back a bit. But what really interrupted the workflow was that due to the ice, all the mail and deliveries were running late. And now I have no idea when some of the supplies I ordered for this outfit are going to get here. I had ordered things to make her stockings, bracelets, belt, and her belt pouches, and none of it arrived. I also didn't get the fur trim for her cloak, so even though that was what I was most looking forward to making, I haven't had a chance to start it. But I guess that's kind of a lesson for me. I'm very much a type A personality when it comes to my projects, and I like to be completely in control of every aspect of it. But I can't control the weather, and I can't control the shipping, so that's a big challenge that I'm going to have to overcome. So I didn't get her outfit done completely, but I did have some socks she could wear for now, and the base part of her outfit is finished, so at least she's dressed. It's good progress for what was really just a week of sewing, I think, since I had to make and test and alter patterns and had all the trouble with the skirt. As of right now, I have no idea when the things I ordered are going to arrive, and some still aren't even in the country, so I'll probably put this on the back burner for just a little bit and work on something else until everything arrives. Who knows, maybe that'll be good for me. That's all for today, though. Thanks for watching. Bye.